<clears throat> thank you. I think uh, we have two, three speakers, I think, in, in, in the segment, right? First, it'll be James, um, and then Sabine, right? And, uh, and Maria and Emma Santos, right, who are sharing a presentation. So uh, as, as Jaime said, you know, the blogs have really started a live debate on this, and I think the issue is not the multidimensionality, but actually uh, should that be indexified or made an index of what does that measure, right, and so on and so forth. So I think the, the first speaker, James, will actually stress the conceptual issues and tell us, at least in theory, you know, the rationale and the, um, you know, in defense of the index, the multidimensional poverty index. James, a brief introduction. James is professor of economics and international relations at George Washington University uh, and a research associate at the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Institute. Received his PhD in economics in 1982 uh, from Cornell and subsequently held positions in Purdue and Vanderbilt uh, before moving to uh, the Elliott School in GW. He has also visited many, many schools, to name a few, LSE, Cornell, back to Cornell, I guess, Essex, Oxford, Harvard, and so on and so forth, including the University of the Americas in Puebla, Mexico. He received a university fellowship and a Robert Wood Johnson Investigator Award in Health Policy and holds an honorary doctorate, I won't dare pronounce this, from Universidad Autonoma del Estado de Hidalgo, Mexico, right. <laughs> okay, so fi finally, Professor Foster is a microeconomist and most of his research focuses on uh, welfare economics, particularly, I think, measuring the well-being of, uh, of individuals. His 1984 Econometrica paper, he is the Foster in the FGT index. <laughs> he is the Foster, you don't like it, speak now. So he is, and this is, I think, the most cited paper, especially we all are familiar with it, right? We have, at some time or the other, applied the F FGT <laughs> index. So to over to... <laughs> to the, about the FGT? There you go. <laughs> so, uh, so James, over to you. I think uh, what we will do is you will speak, and then questions can be taken. Uh, this is by order of the organizers here. Uh, for clarification only when he speaks. And there will be a Q&A for both or three speakers for about 40 minutes at the end of all talks. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tara. Uh, it's been a long time since we were in graduate school together. Uh, but great to see you here. Uh, I'm James Foster, and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about multidimensional poverty measurement. And I hope to give you a little bit of background in terms of unidimensional poverty measurement as, as if you needed it. But I thought that uh, the interesting aspect of what I'll be talking about is the, the direct generalization from the FTT indices, the squared poverty gap, and the rest of them to this multidimensional approach that Sabina and I have put out uh, through our work at uh, the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. So, uh, why multidimensional poverty? Isn't that why we're here? I mean, I'm talking about a different form of multidimensional poverty than simply gathering information on people you have decided are poor due to income. Okay, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about multidimensional poverty as a more fundamental concept, where you identify a person as being poor based on all those dimensions, and where you aggregate up to determine how much poverty there is overall in terms of all those dimensions. Okay, so it's a, a, a bit different than saying that you're interested in multidimensional poverty, the multi many dimensions of poverty. It's a fundamentally different way of looking at things, but really not, because I'm starting with the unidimensional approach and expanding upwards. So you'll see, I hope, that natural transition from the discussion today. But let's think more broadly. Why multidimensional poverty? People have begun talking about this over the last 10, 15 years, starting with interesting papers by Bourguignon, Chakrabarty, and many others partly because of the proliferation of the capability approach of Sen, Nuspam. Uh, it's just taken over a lot of the ways that people think about well-being. It's a conceptual framework that allows us to go beyond 
the constraints of what we have done typically as economists focusing on material goods and what well-being that gives us, but also trying to take into account a more holistic way. Secondly, data have become more available. There are now many more sources of data than 10, 15 years ago. There are more tools to work with because the unidimensional measures have been translated to multidimensional environments and quite effectively by different people. Now, I'll show you some problems with these transitions and the problems that we're addressing in our paper, but it has been done. It's now doable to think about going to the multidimensional approach as one index of poverty, taking into account all these different sources of information. But primarily, the reason why at this point in time there's been excitement on the multidimensional front is that it's demand-driven. Countries have been coming to all of us, or many of us, and saying, well, I want to take into account this. I want to take into account. Here, I've, I've done this great work in this particular area. I think I've succeeded in lowering the actual poverty of people through my work in health or through my work in education. And yet, it's not going to show up for another 20 years in income, right? Or maybe a, another five years, and I'll be out of office. So there are very strong drivers as to why a country might consider thinking of a broader base of information <coughs> for defining poverty. So governments and other organizations are coming to, to all of us here. Okay. So to make it, to spice it up a little bit, I'm going to present a hypothetical challenge. And my apologies for those of you who have heard my hypothetical challenges through the hypothalamus. Uh, it's tough to have it again and again. And I, Gonzalo, you particularly have heard this probably two or three times, right? My hypothetical challenge, a government would like to create an official multidimensional poverty indicator of the type I'm saying, one number, okay? What is to be done? Well, we want to put down some criteria to think about this, and one criterion could be it better be understandable and easy to describe. We all know that's important, isn't it? Second, it must conform to some common sense notion of poverty, something that you can sink your teeth into and say, yeah, that makes some sense to the person on the street. Second, third, it must fit the purpose for which it is being developed. So it's important to identify what that purpose is before we start the discussion, but yet the approach that we're taking today will in fact fit with a variety of purposes. And then you can describe, think for yourself, which ones it might fit best with. It must be technically solid, which I assume means that it has the appropriate background of axioms and all of that good stuff, which I tend to do a lot of, finally. Uh, it must be operationally viable and it must be able to be implemented again and again and again, replicable. So can you implement this given current data? Can you give it uh, a kind of continuing life over time? So these are the desiderata that we're putting forth, and now I get to sit down and let you think about this. Okay, so that's the hypothetical challenge I'm putting before you. Actually, it's not so hypothetical. In 2006, Gonzalo came to me and said, hey, think about this, right? Or 2007, he said, there's a law that has been passed actually a few years before this in which we need to move to a multidimensional approach. How can we do it? They included six other dimensions as listed above, and they approached myself and a number of other authors in this area and said, give it your best shot. <laughs> Well, in 2007, uh, we, uh, Sabina and I, got together, actually it's 2006, December, where she convinced me that it might be worth my while to think about multidimensional poverty. She convinced me because I had had a paper on cr chronic poverty where I could see that income over time was similar to dimensions of poverty. And so the plausibility struck me that in going from that approach of chronic poverty with many papers by people here and others, you know, working in this, that you could go from that idea to a multidimensional approach, taking into account many dimensions, not just time periods, of various types of dimensions of interest. So she convinced me, we got together, worked on the paper, and out came uh, the first draft in 2007 at OPI. 2009, 
Mexico announced an official methodology that was related to ours. I don't know, a sibling, I don't, brother, sister, I don't know, cousin. But in any case, related to ours, and we'll show you how closely related that is a bit later on. Um, and there has been continued interest, and I go back to Bhutan, where the Gross National Happiness Index is built on the framework of the al Qaeda foster approach. 2008-9, we had workshops on 25 countries' application, and then workshops on applications to different dimensions. So if you're not interested in poverty, but rather governance or quality of education, corruption, fair trade, targeting. Uh, so we had a good discussion at that point and started developing some of the ideas behind what we're here today talking about. Then 2010 in Chile, we had a major conference with 300 people. To, uh, 2010, just last month in London, there was the release. I see Jenny uh, Klugman is here. Hello. And uh, release of the MPI by UNDP and OFI. And uh, then another major conference in July, and of course, we're here today. So the interest is continuing on this approach. Our proposal, just to bring it in a nutshell, is to begin the identification of the poor by identifying cutoffs, by looking at cutoffs in each dimension, and taking those cutoffs, right, defining whether you're deprived or not, and then those are called de deprivation cutoffs. And then across the dimensions, having another cutoff by which we say you are poor. Okay, begs the question of which dimensions and all of that. Okay, we will talk about that later. But the crux of it is this way of defining who is poor. In the single dimensional case, it's not a problem who is poor. You make a cut and follow. But what happens when you have different dimensions? Do you have to be poor, deprived in all of them? In some of them, in one of them, okay? So this becomes a very important concept. Second, aggregation, well, what did you expect? We use an adjusted foster Gerthorbeck thorbeck type index. So in aggregation, we're basically pulling it up from the unidimensional approach to multidimension. So let me give you a quick review of unidimension. You may not have seen it quite like this, so pay attention even if you've written many of the reports that have used this. The framework I'm drawing from is Sen's interesting paper in 1976. It's what got me going. Sen was the one who got me going in this area when he visited Cornell in 79 and said, why don't you work on this? And we did. Uh, his paper identified has the two-step approach, right? Identification and aggregation. Before then, it was all identification. Sen came around and said, no, measurement might matter in the sense of how do you combine dimensions? How do you combine you know, what you have and what I have to an overall indicator of poverty. So his work brought us to that next step of measurement. Okay. So we'll use that framework throughout today. And if you have a better framework for discussing poverty, as I said in one of the blog discussions, please, please tell me about it. Because this seems to be a very nice and simple, straightforward way of thinking about poverty. Second. The goal of this whole exercise for what I'm talking about today is this function which goes from information to a number for a variety of purposes. The number may matter or the number may matter over time only. It depends what the purpose is of the measure. However, this is what we're trying to get to and I can argue with you and talk to you about why having two numbers might diffuse the message why having five numbers might totally confuse people and why it becomes totally non-salient if you have ten individual dimensions and try to present them to someone. Okay? But we won't uh, go there till later. The variable in the unidimensional approach is typically called income, but that stands for consumption or any other aggregate that matters. That aggregate could be defined as a combination of many things. Now when uh, Santiago Levy was talking about Progressa and they had the law that went into effect. They had a multidimensional measure of poverty built on the squared gap. And it used many dimensions to combine to create an aggregate from whence you created a unidimensional poverty measure. It may be using information on aggregates, but I'm going to explain to you why that doesn't take into account the shortfalls within each dimension and therefore it isn't fully a multidimensional approach according to what we're saying. Okay, second, 
after you have income as your